When I first started growing, I always knew that I wanted to eventually get to the city where there would be a lot of people and I could sell my flowers for a much better price than I would get in a small town. And so I really made that a goal. And I did eventually get into a bigger city and a farmer's market, and I promptly got kicked out. (laughs) So today we're going to talk about that experience. I think there's some lessons to be learned here, and we're going to just put a lot of ideas on the table about competition and try to be okay with it. Welcome to Learn Cut Flower Growing. Whether you are an inspiring green thumb, a busy mompreneur, or simply seeking a passion, you are in the right place. If I had to do it all over again, knowing what I know now, I would do it smarter. And that's what I'm sharing here. I want to take years off your learning and help you bloom with confidence in your garden. Each episode, I'll share practical tips and ideas, heartfelt stories, and expert insights to help you grow and find balance in your journey. I'm Paula Rice, your cut flower farmer guide. I've been growing for 16 years, and I'm an expert in my field, literally. So grab your gardening gloves and listen to me while you work, or grab a cup of coffee and relax as you learn to manage a cut flower garden and business. So it's super obvious when we bring a bunch of farmers together that you have a farmer's market, and then lots of people will come, and that is the good part. When you have a food court, you put a lot of food vendors together and a lot of people will come. The mere fact that you've brought all of the same type of producer to a space actually draws more customers. So I was in Walla Walla and, you know, there's a lot, we were doing kind of the wine tastings and they were explaining how In the beginning, there was like only 30 wineries and now there was 160. And I have to think, oh my goodness, if I was a winery, I wouldn't want another winery to come in. But the sheer massiveness of the wineries is the draw that consumers will come and vacate there. And it kind of makes the tide rise for everybody else. Okay. And that's where I wanted to go with this is that that rising tide slogan, idiom, catchphrase. I love it and I hate it. (laughs) I don't think we should really live our lives according to these catchphrases. I mean, I've got some on a spiritual level where they work for me. They're a good reminder. But overall, I feel like there's more to the story. You know, when you're in, you're watching a movie and they are, it's a court case and they're like, yes or no, yes or no. And you're like, but but there's more to it than just yes or no. And I feel like when I started to hear that phrase with a rising tide lifts all boats, I, I was like, yes, but not always. And so one example of that would be when the California cut flower commission was launching their American grown flowers advertising program. They were making a really cute sticker of a heart with a flag, and they were going to put it on grocery, other grocery bouquets. And they were trying to get even the local growers through the ASCFG to join up for that program, pay a fee. And the fee they were asking you to pay for a small grower was really a lot less than what a giant California grower would pay. But I have to say that I did not dig that program. (laughs) And of course, I'm all for American grown, okay? I love the idea of that, but that's a really big boat on the tide. A really big boat and a big enough boat to cause some waves and capsize other boats. And I just, in my mind, at my local level, I could not reconcile to it. I was like, no, that's really not going to be in my best interest at all to support American grown, knowing that these are huge flower companies that literally have farms in other countries. And so it's like, okay, if you have a farm, if you're an American company, but you have a, a farm in another country that is able to employ people for far less, are you going to be able to be, call those American grown flowers? Are those flowers going to be able to go in that bouquet? And at the time, there was a percentage of flowers that did not have to be domestically grown to go into that bouquet. 
So I kind of railed against that because I was like, well, then that's not an American grown bouquet, even though the company might logistically on paperwork be an American company. And I really worried about, you know what? I've been on enough boards to know that it only ever takes the change up of a few board members to change the rules of anything. So it was like, was that percentage going to grow and be something else? That aside, I did not like it because I knew when I stood at a grocery store and I looked at all of the flowers and I was, I'm in grocery stores. I was in grocery stores and there was this cute little American grown logo. I would be like, well, that checks all the boxes. It's patriotic. It's, it's probably local. Who knows what that means? And they would buy that. And me being a local grower, I just saw clearly it's like, that's not a very competitive level. Like the system, the boat of that system is so large. You're not competing against it. Okay. I did. And, you know, with my local, Actually, I still, I actually don't see that logo around very much anymore, but when they're standing there and my local flowers are there and the American grown flowers were there, it was like, I was going to have a hard time competing with that because it really, like I would really have to up my locally grown and do a lot of advertising. And for me to sell a bouquet and to be profitable at a much smaller level is very different. Like, like I have to have a certain amount, like maybe I need to have a profit of $10 a bouquet because, you know, I'm only bringing 200 bouquets or a week or a hundred bouquets a week where they, their profit margin doesn't have to be that much because they're selling so many that their profit margin can be a lot less. It's kind of like Amazon, like Amazon literally can probably just have a profit of 10 cents, (laughs) a profit of 10 cents because they have so many people to sell to 10 cents times a million. That's a decent profit probably. But for me and us local growers, that is not cutting it. We cannot have a 10 cent profit. We cannot have a $2 profit type of thing. So I just want to bring that up because I just knew, I mean, I wish them all the best. I wish all of their laborers and their workers the best. I get it. But I knew that I'm like, whoa, that that's, that's too big of a boat. I need to get over a little bit. And so I actually did not love that program. I did not join that program. I would far more prefer to, to join a program that supported small growers and local growers. Okay. That being said, that was kind of a tangent because I just wanted to show that, okay, I love that we all come together and the tide rises us all, but it's not always that way. And from a business perspective, I really had to to niche that down and see it for how it was literally going to affect me. And I was like, no, that's not a good idea to promote that. Yes, I promote American flowers. Yes, I promote local. I promote flowers all the way around. But I knew that that was not going to be something that was going to help me sell flowers. And a personal experience I had with just competing at a farmer's market and bringing a lot of flowers to the market was when I was at the farmer's market in Sandpoint, there was another grower there. And I, I, I was just picking everything. Like I didn't have a lot of markets at that time to sell my flowers. And that market was my number one place to make money at the time. And so I would bring everything because I would look at my field, I would harvest everything and I would be like, okay, here I go. I got to sell as much as I can. Well, one day the other flower vendor came over and she was like, Paula, you are flooding this market with your flowers. And I was, I just was like, no, I'm actually growing my market. But her comment made me sit back. I was like, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, oh man, you know, it didn't make me feel good to get that comment for sure. But what I said was true. I was not out there to flood the market. I was out there to grow my market and I wasn't there to put her out of business. She really didn't even want to be a big grower at all, but it, I don't know, it was a bad thing to, for me to have to think about. And I was like, you know what? I don't want, I'm not trying to put anybody out of business. Luckily, later on in the year, because I was bringing more flowers, because I was pushing it, she came over like a month or two later and she goes, Paula, she goes, I just want to say that I'm actually selling more flowers now too. You brought a lot more flowers and people are buying a lot more flowers and she was happy. And that made me feel really good. I was really grateful that she came and said that to me because I was like, 
ma'am, I'm not here to take anybody out. In fact, there was another flower vendor. She was there before I was. And then she left. She wasn't there when I was there. And then she came back a little bit later and she sold flowers too. And it never bothered me. You know, I kept my head down. I figured my business is my business. And in those examples, they're just beautiful examples of the whole tide thing or just us coming together in a co-op situation. Cause even if I was going to do in a, 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 well, I had thought about that a few times. It's like, wow, what if we got more growers in the area and we just all showed up at one space on a certain day and then that would draw the florists to come to us or the do-it-yourself brides. They would just know that there's this flower market, the whole co-op idea. I love all of that. That's a great idea. And it works because you have enough people there, but you do have to have a healthy perspective of competition. And I think that's what we will talk about next. So what is kind of a healthy competition? <laughs> and I think I think we should just put on the table right away that, you know, if I'm at the farmer's market, I'm not loving the idea to see a, another flower farmer come. Like, like, I think I would be like the lady that was like, Paula, you're flooding your, your, the market with your flowers. I mean, I'm not going to say anything, but I am going to notice. I'm like, okay, they're bringing flowers. Okay, let's check out their flowers and see what that is. From a perspective of, well, number one, of course, I want to sell, be the only flower vendor. And I want to sell all my flowers every week. And I want everybody to buy my flowers every week. Okay, fine. That's not reasonable. That's not the way the world works. And I understand that. But I definitely am going to take notice because now it's like, okay, like I need to keep my standard up. And I've seen that. It, I mean, competition keeps you in line. It keeps you being, trying new products, bringing new things to the market. It keeps the other farmers, you know, constantly raising the bar on their displays, on the quality of their produce and all of that. And it's the same with flower vendors. I just want to say that let's just go to the space where it's like, dang it, oh, another flower vendor's here <laughs> to the space of, okay, well, I'm just going to have to up the ante on, on my sales and all of that. And then the consumers can choose who they want to buy from. And with the three that were in Sandpoint and the vegetable farmers that would bring their flowers, it never bothered me. I just didn't look up. I know who I was. I know what I could do. And it just literally never bothered me. But selling flowers in a small town can be definitely a little more di difficult. So I was going to be headed to Coeur d'Alene. I was just going to try to get better and better and better until I could produce enough and know that I could sell in a bigger city. So I headed off to that bigger city. It was two cities away and I checked out, I checked them out. I'm like, okay, there's actually not a lot of flowers here. And back in the day, flowers, being a flower farmer was kind of a new thing. It was definitely all vegetables and they would bring a few of their own flowers. So I checked it out. There wasn't a ton. And then one day I kind of applied. I called them and I said, Hey, I, I have some flowers. Could I bring them to the market to sell them? And they were like, sure. Yeah. We've got some space on Wednesday. You can come. It was a mid, this one, they go, they had it twice. One on a Saturday, once on a Wednesday. And so I was like, Ooh, great. Okay. I went on the Wednesday. I tried it out. It was kind of in a downtown area. I did fine. You know, Wednesday was fine. And I was like, okay, all right. This is, I did it. I was able to do it. Let's, let's try the Saturday market. So in a few weeks I called and I said, Hey, would there be availability for me to come down and sell on a Saturday? And she said, yep, we actually have a vendor who is not coming. And so you could come and set up in their space. And so I wasn't a full on member yet. And you kind of had to just kind of call and see if there was space for you, if there was going to be an opening. So I did that and I showed up at the Saturday market. I set up and it was, I was way off to the corner, like just way off in the ding tulies. And the whole time I was there, I was looking down the way and there was this, just this really big farmer. And obviously he built up a very healthy following of customers because people would come and they would just go straight there. They would get the stuff and they would leave. But it's such a big city. Of course, there were people meandering for the rest of it. And I made that Saturday, like $350, $450. I don't remember what it was, but I do know that coming from my little town of Bonner's Ferry and, you know, really struggling to make sales and then moving to Sandpoint, 
you know, and being like, okay, a hundred dollars and then trying to inch that up, just how long it took to build that, to build it to where people were buying cut flowers was really hard. It took time, took effort. But here I was in, in Coeur d'Alene, I was off in the Ding Tulis compared to the amount of people showing up down the way, not a ton were coming my way. And I still made pretty good money on my first run. And I was very encouraged by that. I was like, okay, I was like, okay, I can do this. I can build a market here because I know it just takes time for people to try my flowers, to realize that, okay, she's doing it right so that they can get a week out of their flowers. I was really excited. And so when people showed up, I mean, I worked that market. When I showed up, if you were coming my way and you were going to look at my flowers or consider buying my flowers, I was really on ball with saying, hey, I am Paula Rice. I am from Bonners Ferry, Idaho. I am a dedicated flower grower, so I don't grow anything else. I only grow flowers, and this is absolutely my passion. So I gave everybody my little sales pitch. I thought I made great sales for it being my first day. And at the end, the farmer's market came up to me and she's like, okay, Paula, I see that you did good today, but um, you're not going to be able to come back. And I was like, okay, in my mind, I was like, I did not hear that right. <laughs> I didn't hear that right. I looked at her and I'm like, I need, I need clarification. I was like, okay, what? And she's like, yeah, she goes, you know how it is with other vendors and, and things like that. So yeah, you're just not going to be able to come back. And I, I felt like I needed more explanation. Like you just crushed my dreams. You're just like, I've been, I beefed up for this. This is where I'm trying to go. Like I, I'm not just a hobbyist. I'm a flower grower and I've got kids to feed. You know, I had all of this was going in my mind. I'm like, you can't just say that to me. Like that is not the end of my little world. And I have four sisters. And so I, I loaded up my stuff just like, no, 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 no. This is not how this goes. I've read books about this. I've, I've, I've done little courses about this. Everybody encourages everybody there. They want you to be a grower. They want you to come to the market. This is how this game works. And so I called all my sisters on the way home and I just literally ranted. I hope you all have a sister or someone in your life that can always work through those problems with you. I have four and they each got a call. So I got home and so. I was like, okay, all right, well, for the rest of the year, that's not going to happen. And I just said, like, that's fine. You know, I'll stay where I was. Uh, I've got all these extra flowers. I will sell them in other ways. You know, my current markets, I was just like beefing all of them up. But I thought, fine. I was like, well, fine. I will just apply then. I'll apply to that farmer's market. You know, I won't just be this random vendor. So I did. I got online. I got their little application and they accepted my application and they, cashed my check. And so the next year I'm like, okay, I am in this year. I'm going to make it down there and it's just going to get better. And I called, it was, my flowers were growing. I called the market manager and I'm like, hi, this is Paula Behaven Flower Farm. And I'm ready to come to the market. When can I start? And she's like, you, you can't come. And I was like, well, they accepted my application and cashed my check. And she's like, I'm going to need to look into this. And I was like, okay, okay. (laughs) Lo and behold, I got this letter in the mail saying that there was a mistake, that I wasn't in there. In fact, let me read that to you. I literally have this letter because I thought, well, if you're going to turn somebody down, I thought they had written it pretty well. This is back in 2011. And it says, and so I had made argument that there, there was no, um, There was no glut of flowers. I was like, there's there's not enough flowers for that giant city. But anyways, here we go. Though no glut of flowers may have been evident on any one particular day, especially if it was later in the day, many of our flower vendors report often going home with flowers at the end of the market. And our assessment is that in general, the market is saturated. What is most unfortunate and what we are unable to explain at this time is that you did not receive the letter informing you that your application for membership was denied. It was mailed to you this spring. I mean, there's no evidence of that whatsoever, but here we go. Furthermore, at this time, we are not sure how it happened that your check was inadvertently cashed. So there you go. I was out. And I want to say about this is that glut of flowers, vendors going home with their flowers, 
Like that's only because they're not selling their flowers or they haven't, they don't have a customer base for it. I understand how many people out there would love to use the board, would love to use the market manager to police their competition. Okay. I get it. I, I know when someone shows up, I'm not going to be in love with the idea of the competition, but at the end of the day, if they're going home with their flowers, it might just not be that there's such a glut. It might actually be that their flowers are not that good. And I'm like, I, I would be like, no, I would not be going home with my flowers. I would be working to sell my flowers and improving as a grower. I could go on and on and I could rant about this, but here's where I want to go with this is like, don't be an idiot (laughs) like I was. Oh my gosh. Do not show up. Here is your warning. Do not show up at the farmer's market. Like go ahead of time and discover who the other vendors are because this is what was happening. When I stood there at that market and I was bragging on, I am a dedicated flower farmer. This is what I do. I've been doing it. It was 2000. It would have been 2010. I'd been doing it for three years. It was the other vendors because I didn't know who the other vendors were. It was the other vendors coming down to check me out. Like you would do. I guess you would do that. And here I gave them my spiel, like full on gave them my spiel. And I'm sure they didn't love to hear that. So don't do that. Just don't do that. Be a little more humble pie and just be like, you know, work, do the best you can, but recognize that not everybody understands and plays that game fairly. And in the long run, I think they ended up changing their rules so that two counties down could not really apply, which ousted me. And I want to say, because I I can hear some people out there saying, well, if, you know, we got to adjudicate the products a little bit because we don't want too much of one thing. But when it comes to farmers and flowers, like, okay, maybe you don't want 10 crocheters. I don't know. I, I might be a little hard on the, the, the crafting side. I'm not. I love my crafters. Truly. I want crafters at my farmer's market. I want a beautiful diversity of people so that the customers will come. But man, I just feel like yeah, I have that story in my history and I feel like it can be used in the wrong way if you are not careful. And so that's why I think it's like, okay, can we watch the sales? Can we see how people are selling? so that we can watch what the consumers are wanting and provide that so that we can get more and more consumers. I feel like that's a good business thing to do and that don't use the board and all of those guys to the bureaucracy of things to police your competition, because that's just not freedom. That's not free market. That's not, it's not right. And I think in the day and age when we have a lot of young growers trying to get into the markets and it's pretty much closed off because I don't know, other growers have been there forever. I just don't think it's cool that we don't let them in and, and show their stuff. And it's not that that's happening. It's not, I think that was just pretty kind of an experience that is rare. And yeah, I don't know where I'm going with all of that, you guys. It's just that be careful. It was a big hit to me. I was like, I remember just being like, this cannot be happening. This is, I need the city. And so as I moved forward in my business, like basically I was really kind of robbed of that opportunity to know what selling in a big city would be like for a farmer's market. Cause when I go to the cities and I go to conferences, I'm just amazed at how big cities are. And there's people on top of people, like really 10 city blocks could suffice for a lot of growers. That would be a lot of product produce to create and sell. Okay. So that's just to touch a little bit on the paradox of competition, you know, like No, I don't want competition, but we need competition. I want to be the only seller of my flowers, but that's not realistic. I want my farm stand to be the only one in the town, but that's just not realistic either. It makes all the sense in the world that more farm stands should pop up so that communities in little parts of my county don't have to go forever away in order to purchase some flowers, purchase some eggs and things like that. And I believe in that local economy, especially after going through 2021, we really need to bring back local producers and find ways to support them and buy from them. And a lot of times just the the sheer fact that people don't want to go out of their way makes it more difficult. I am so blessed here because people do go out of their way to come to my farm stand. And I hear of some other farm stands popping up and I feel like they will be able to 
get producers in their little areas and sell stuff to their local communities around them. And that's all good. Do I want them all all over the county to come to my farm stand and buy my flowers? Yeah, absolutely. I literally do. But I know that other people have dreams and hopes and, and now I will just have to say, okay, well, how can I improve my systems and my farm stand and my growing to compete with that? Because I so utterly believe in freedom and free markets and all of that, that I just, yeah, we have to play that game fairly. So that's what I'm saying. Be that fair person, be willing to compete and we can have a tide. (laughs) that lifts up all our boats, but you still have the right to make some logical decisions on whether this is going to be a good business decision because I literally was not for promoting anything other than local flowers, but I am for for like when FTD does the whole promoting of flowers, I know they're raising the awareness of people buying flowers and that's lovely. There you go. It's just stuff on the table that we're talking about today. Wanted to put that out there in case you get out there. Make sure you just your humble pie a couple times around before you go for it. You guys, God bless. I have a couple of podcasts coming up where I literally am out in the field doing the thing so that I could be videoing it and putting and I could put it also on YouTube. So, but I tried to really literally do the podcast thing, but while I was working and I'm not positive how that turned out. So the next two episodes is going to be one with me in my raspberry patch and how I ended up with such a giant raspberry patch, which is a great story because raspberry foliage is a forever foliage. And then the other one is how I get the greenhouse, the hoop house up and running. Um, I just attack it, that raw land and turn it into beds and get it ready for planting. And so I attempted to do them Yeah. Let me know. Let me know how you like those. If those are good, if I have to come back in here and sit and do a podcast with you. All right, you guys, happy growing. Get out there and just discipline yourself to go do something today in that garden. Because if you do something, something will happen. 